Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, for those of you who are interested in such things, we are modelling a shirt that hasn't fallen apart in the washing machine and gone unnoticed until you lot pointed it out. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, never mind, it's done now. And the poor old thing's gone in the bin and I had to look at the label in the collar to find out what type of shirt it was because I'd like to try and replace it. It was my favourite coloured shirt. And unfortunately it comes from a place that I can't order online and I'm not allowed to go out to get such things. So I have to put up with the other shirts now. Right, this is part one of a new idea for a start of season update for the whole lot which is a big deal. Once upon a time I did that and it took nine videos that were like 35-40 minutes each. We're not doing that again. But you've seen me like with the holy clay pots on Sunday showing each plant as I water it. One that slows me down quite badly and two you've got to put up with the banging and clanging while I water each plant when you can't even see it. But that's not the best way of doing it. So I've come up with a new idea. So I'm starting off a section at a time. So this is the concept, we're going to do a section, or we'll do a rack, yeah? Because obviously mounts get watered on a different cycle, you know, or we'll do that top shelf or something like that. But I'll do it in sections. The plants don't move about that much, so we shouldn't miss anything out. What I will miss out, though, is the project plants, because they were all done in March in quite a lot of detail, so we won't do those again. But everything else... But my concept is, instead of taking them down and looking at them and talking about them and watering them, I thought, why not do all that first and then have a look at them as I put them back? <laughs> and we don't get the watering bit in between, do we? So that's what we're going to do. All I've got to do is remember where I got them from. Now, the camera's been brought into the grow room today because obviously the plants will be in much better light. Um, but it does mean I'm... I have got less room to move and I need to go careful not to knock the tripod and um, you need to try and put the plants back in the order they came off in. Another reason for putting the camera right up there out of the way is there's some plants I don't want you to see until tomorrow. So uh, we won't be doing those today. Right so putting things back. Um, they go back in like I've said in the same place virtually. Um, so we'll start over here We'll start with one that's got no tag on it. <laughs> All I can remember now is it's an Alisiara. And it's one that struggled for almost three years. Different media attempts, different size pots. We did all that. It's an Oncidium type, obviously. Stick it on a mount and it decides to grow. And grow it is. Um, it put out a very weak growth last year up this end. It may well push another one up. But in the meantime, halfway along the plant, it's got a new growth there, and it's got another larger one next to it, and recently it's got another one coming out here. So up this end of the plant, we've got three new growths. I'm happy with that, because the most I've ever got was one. So we've got at least three to come on that this year, and we may still get one up this end. There is some growth there, uh, sort of in the plant at this end because it did manage a new growth up that end but whether it can do another one or not we'll have to wait and see anyway so that's that one i'll put the full name up as a pop-up because i can't remember it off the top of my head all i can remember is it's an alisiara i've had for ages and it won't grow but it is now right so that's one of the I was just going to say that's one of the twinkles, but I'll add, a I'll add a line in. That's one of the twinkles with a little bit of scale. Well, it's actually dead. It's old scale. Right, um, this is one of the twinkles, and this is probably the, one of the cinnamon ones, and it might even be the one to go. I can't remember which one it is, um, but I'm pretty confident that's a live scale. Mm. Keep my eye on it. As soon as I start seeing them on the leaves, I start to get more into panic mode. <laughs> um, right, this one's growing all over the place at the moment. It's got a tiny little growth coming up there between those two bulbs. And then up here, it's got one, two, three. And then right up the back there, on literally against the mount, is another one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five new growths on that little plant. So, um, 
that it potentially that's at least five flower spikes later down the line, uh, winter bloomers mainly. So that's at least five and some twinkles do have a habit of putting out two spikes per bowl. Could be more then. So that's that one. Next, next we've got my struggling oncidium species that's about to lose its last leaf. This really is. What happened was it, it grew a new pseudo bulb and it rotted. I had to cut it off. Uh, one of those bacterial ones, infections, real fast, chop, chop off, remove immediately. And um, it's failed so far to start a growth farther back on the plant. And it's about to lose its last leaf. Um, that is a non-functioning leaf, leaf now, it's about to fall. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with this. This may not recover. But it's on live moss on a mount. Never grew that well in a pot. And that's just a wait and see. The bulbs are a little desiccated, but they're not totally shriveled. I've seen a lot worse than that. So there's still something in the plant. It just needs to work out where to push up a new growth, basically, which it may not do, in which case it will fail. So two choices there. You can grow and you can die. Um, another twinkle. This was the little yellow one that had a couple of pieces that fell off when I repotted it. Um, I think what happened with the little yellow one is when I repotted it, I took a couple of pseudo bulbs off that were the old, you know, starting to go a bit brown and they were in a place where the plant then separated. And I had two little tiny pieces that I decided to throw on a mount. And um, each one of those is producing a single new growth at the moment. So this little piece at the bottom has got a new growth here. The piece at the top has got a new growth there. That might be all it's going to do this year. I have found that the yellow twinkle is the weaker of all of them. It just doesn't grow as strongly as some of the others. Now if you didn't ever see the others, you'd think your yellow one was fine. But when you've got the various types, you notice the difference. But, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's growing, or each piece is growing. Now what have we got then? This is the other twinkle. So this is probably the other cinnamon twinkle. This might be the one to go. Yeah, out of the two, this this I'd have kept the best one for myself because I love the cinnamon twinkle. So everyone's getting a good look over now because these are very close together. If one's got scale, uh, the others might have. Right, so this one, uh, whoever um, bid on this one, you will get it eventually, trust me. Um, at the time, I would imagine it had no new growths, um, but it has two now. There's one coming out this end and one, one just starting at this end. So at the moment, that's got two new growths, which will bloom. So that's coming on. The last one to go up there is the um, Dendrobium. I can't remember whether that was a project plant or not, but we have looked at that quite recently. It's the one that I had a feeling might have two plants tangled up together here because of the two different types of blooms. You've got one that's got delicate pink in places, and then one that's got the same pink over the whole of the bloom, virtually, apart from a white centre. Um, they look... <sighs> At the end of the day, if it's two plants, tough. <laughs> it's just a matter of seeing what happens, really. But um, this area here has got a new growth down the base here. So that's got a new growth coming there. And then this area here has got three new growths, one of which is pushing on quite well, is already up to here. Um, so there's three new growths there. Any up the back? Right at the back? Nope. And that one. So that one's got four new growths, one of which is way ahead of the others. That's all right. <laughs> Even though my dendrobiums very rarely get scale, if they're actually parked next to an oncidium that's got scale, then they might. They're more prone to the old uh, mealy bugs of the dendrobiums. Right, so that's that section. The next lot go back up there. And we'll start off with this one. We won't start off with some coffee. The humidity drops down quite quickly with this door wide open. So obviously the air on the other side of it is quite dry. And um, obviously I've shut the kit off so the humidifier is off. It's already dropped down to 63. 
<laughs> it's supposed to be 75. Right, this is was a gift and it's got a name about eight foot long and it's Fansing Shinensi and it's a recent recently discovered dendrobium and it's just found in one area on a mountainside um, in China um, and at the moment it's currently doing absolutely nothing dropped its leaves in the winter there's no sign of a new growth yet but it did grow a few roots last year but at the moment that is doing nothing it's totally dormant now I'd have thought that would have woken up by now but it hasn't so I'm waiting to see if it does it may not a very small plant when I got it uh, this is that um, tetragonum variety gigantia and I've now seen with the um, GVOS stuff that was posted on the Facebook group somebody else has got this with the same blooms as I got and they're not the right blooms. Remember when mine bloomed I was quite disappointed and thought it was some sort of alba form and it might actually be a cross because I've now seen one that's identical. Well if they came from the same source in the Far East yeah, they could be masquerading as the species when they're not. They're actually a hybrid um, because those blooms were identical. I was so disappointed when this bloomed, I didn't even take a picture of it. It's borderline throwing it out. Um, it's just the fact that it was given to me. Now this is doing next to nothing, but I've just noticed there's a tiny little bit of green there. You won't see that, it's too small. Um, but that's, that's been sat not growing for a long time now. It's not dying or anything, it's just not growing. I'm hoping that warmer temperatures are going to get that going again. But it's not doing much at the moment. In fact, it's doing next to nothing. Got nothing right there, and it's right next to it. Right, so what else we got? One of my sad looking Latorias that again is doing absolutely nothing. It's not dead. If it was dead, all of its leaves would have dropped instead of just most of them. Um, that cane needs to come off. It's not soft, but it's shriveled to such an extent it is of no use and the last attempt at growing a new growth actually aborted and died. It's now doing nothing. There are no signs of new growths but again I'm hoping the warmer temperatures will kick it off. Don't ask which one it is. Most of the Latorias got mounted in a single session and the tags got left off so until that grows and blooms I, I don't don't actually care what it is. If it grows again and gets to bloom again then I'll show some interest in it. This is my Dendrobium tortilli, or tortile, tortil, however you want to say it. And two kikis, main plant rotted. And um, the two kikis have grew nicely last year and are currently pushing up two new growths and should in the not too distant future start some new roots as well. But growing, doing something. We like those sort of plants. Right, where are we now? Oi, oi, oi. This is one of the new dendrobiums, and this is Carnifia, can, Carini ferum. I can't say that word, it's just, oh, my head won't get round it. Carini ferum. Behave. And um, new plant, it's doing nothing, but it hasn't dropped its leaves. The two canes are possibly finished growing, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm waiting for this to adapt and start to do something. It's got some roots, it's got green leaves, but it's not doing anything new yet. So waiting on that one to start moving and respond. Oops, that one goes lower down, otherwise the leaves get bashed. Get down there. We'll go careful in this area because uh, <laughs> I've actually chewed some leaves off that have poked through the holes in the fan. Right, some bigger stuff. Mm. This is my tiny twinkle. A number of new growths on here are not even possible to count, but it is growing well. I mean, you've just got to look at this area here. There's three new growths clustered together there, and then you've only got to move along a little bit and you'll find another one. One up in the middle, another one down there. Um, it's just growing. It's basically doing what it does this time of year, which is loads of new growths. And up the top here, you've got a whole row. One, two, three, four, five. 
So that has got a lot of new growth. So I'd say 10. It might have a few more. And it may still push some out because some of these bulbs are pushing two out instead of one. So an undetermined number of new growths. And on this one, virtually all of the new growths will produce two spikes. So that's going to be a bit of a show later in the year. Well, winter time. So that's that one. And then this big one has a got a flipping tag on it. And I keep forgetting which one it is. But again, this one's been on this mount some time and it was mounted at quite, as quite a large plant. And it's just chucking out new growths everywhere. Um, where's my camera? There, there, here, there, there. Another one down there. That bulb's got two growths coming out of it. And coming on round here, with one here, one here, one there. There's just loads. Loads and loads. Another big strong one there. Um, some up the back, yes. One, two, three, four, five. Six along the top in the upper story. The balcony area. Um, so again, lots of new growths. And this has one to two spikes per growth, mainly two. It's a strong plant now, so uh, as twinkles go, uh, that's a big one. But I've had it a long time. You know, everybody will have big mature plants one day. As long as you look after them, they, they should logically just get bigger. And then this one, this has been recently mounted. It's got live moss on it, and I don't remember doing it. I don't know whether the orchid fairy snuck in and mounted it for me. I wonder if they did a video. They might have done. But it wasn't... I just don't remember doing that plant, so I don't know what it is. Uh, it, it looks in incredibly like a twinkle, <laughs> um, but I don't remember mounting that one. And it hasn't been there long, so it hasn't done much. I can see one new growth coming out of the base there, but that's about all on that one. Um, not really doing much at the moment. I haven't got a clue what that is. I just do not remember mounting that. And for it, for it to have that type of moss on it, including what I call the fluffy moss, it can't have been done that long ago. It, it can't have done. Um, right, other stuff. This is the stuff that goes back up there, but they all get done together until I run out of space to hang things. This is the um, Miltonia Queen Anne that is potentially virused, so it gets kept separate. Um, a fair old bit of vigour for a so-called virus plant. Uh, it's got this new growth here that's pushing on nicely. Still growing. A um, couple of spots on the underside of that leaf, but apart from that, not bad. And there's another new growth here, pushing up from inside there. That's off of this bulb. So that's pushing out on that side of that bulb. And on the other side of that bulb, it's got another growth. Now that one's got some slightly crinkled leaves. So that one, that one doesn't seem to be grown as strong. And then right on the other end of the plant, which in fact is the back end of the plant, where it was sawn off, it's got another new growth. And this one's getting kept until it blooms, which it will. And then if the blooms are badly distorted and misshapen with colour break all over them like they were last time, then in the bin it goes. But until then, I'm willing to give it a chance. So we'll see how that one progresses. That gets put somewhere where it doesn't touch any other uh, oncidiums. Um, and the other Miltonia that um, came from the same place, which is a garden centre or nursery in Madeira. I bought three. All three of them had Fusarium, and one of them was so far gone it didn't live, didn't even make it. Um, the Fusarium's long gone, as far as I know. The treatments have got rid of that. But this is the other one, and this is a naturally occurring hybrid, Castanea. And um, one growth at each end, pushing on nicely, growing nice and strong. But two leads on this one, so we've got one coming out. Again, they should both bloom later in the year. Very attractive blooms on that. A strange combination of colours. It's an orangey colour with a purple. They're not normally two colours that you'd see together, but they're attractive on a plant. It might not look so good on your kitchen wall, but uh, on a plant they look marvellous. And then the last one there is this one from the Christmas raffle, which is... Um, uh, Epidendrum lanipes, I think it is, or lanipes, or lanipipes, or something like that. Lanipes, I think it's pronounced. And this has just started its first new growth, down in there. I only just noticed that. Um, it grew a few roots after it was mounted, 
um, one of which is still growing here. This one's gone aerial, this one stopped growing. Um, I think that one was already on it. Um, but it's coming into growth. There is a now a new actual um, growth growth and it's got some roots. I've got a feeling it might have been two pieces. So it's, di it's difficult to say because they're all tangled up at the moment. But it's, it's coming into growth, so it's doing something. Um, yeah, good. Um, I keep forgetting to trim that off. That, that's a damaged cane. It's not rotten or anything. Um, probably damaged in transport, but it just needs tidying because it annoys me because it flippy flops around. Right, so that's that little set then, and um, how they look now, and then we'll possibly have another look at them later in the year. Um, actually, I'll do the, the mounted phalaenopsis got watered in this session, but I always put them straight back because they don't, <laughs> they don't drip on anything else. That's the one that's been in bloom for a long time. Um, I have actually taken the bloom off the spike completely because it extended and extended and extended. The blooms were getting a long way from the plant and every now and again when a Phalaenopsis type does that I like to give it a rest from blooming and normally by taking the spike off it will go back into vegetative growth and, and push up at least one new leaf and possibly some new roots. This hasn't grown any roots for a long time. That's probably because it was in bloom. So we'll see what it does now. It's having a rest from blooming. Um, some pale patching on the leaves on this one. Not quite sure why. And then this one, this has grown some new roots recently and has, for a mounted Phalaenopsis, quite an extensive root system. Um, there's none physically growing at the moment with root tips, although this one has branched and those two are heading straight into the mount. I think one of them is going to come out the other side. Um, now this one, oh it has got a new root there, with a root tip. This one grew two new leaves a while back and they didn't complete. So they started off, they're a nice colour, but they're not meant to be that big. They're meant to be this big and they stopped growing. I don't know why, uh, but again we'll have to just wait and see, won't we? Uh, no name on that one. Attracted blooms though, otherwise it wouldn't still be here. And this is the Sideria japonica, or Phalaenopsis japonica now. And again, this has grown a few new leaves recently, one of which is badly pockmarked. But it's stopped, so it's not getting any worse. So whatever did that has stopped. And it wasn't bugs, I don't know what did that. Um, but anyway, the latest few leaves that it's grown have not grown to their full potential. And it hasn't grown a new root for some time either. But it's just started another new leaf. Now I don't know whether that one's going to push on or not. But strictly speaking again, that's not really my plant. Somebody put a bid in on that. And they were the only one that bid on it. So the amount they bid is not what they're going to pay. That's not a good plant. I'm not charging that sort of money for something like that. You might end up just paying postage and a token gesture. But I'm not charging quite a bit of money for a plant like that. I think somebody bid quite high. Perhaps it was somebody who'd been trying to get one for a while and couldn't, and then suddenly saw the chance. But I forget what the bid was, but you're not paying that much. Right, so that's that set. Um, I hope you like that idea better than the, the other way round, picking a plant up, talking about it, then watering it and putting it somewhere else, because the watering bit you can't even see. I think that's a better idea. And that got us through quite a lot of plants in one go and cleared a section. That's one section done now. So next time I do one of these type of updates, we'll do a different section. Perhaps we'll do a, a shelf or a rack or like some, come down through that lot or something. But what I, um, I won't always do it as part of watering, but with the mounts it suits it. Um, with doing the racks it might not because they get watered in, in different schedules. So, you know, like here I'd be watering that lot down there in one watering cycle, the hanging ones in a different watering cycle, and the holy clay pots in yet a different cycle. So they wouldn't get done on the same day. It very rarely occurs like that. So we'll see what the next set will be. Um, tomorrow is the 8th, that'll be everything in bloom. Um, I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but at the moment, it's dawned on me because I had to water things in the garden today. Some things were physically drooping badly, 
lack of water and I can't remember the last time we had rain. It's a long, long time ago. It may have even been recorded on a video since I film most days, um, but we haven't had any rain for a very, very long time. That's the third year running where there's been a spring drought and it messes up some of the plants. Yeah? Some of them don't bloom as a consequence. You know, it's, uh, and that messes up the insects, which you know the birds feed on. Got all the spring migrants coming in; they'd like to eat something, so it does mess things up. But, uh, whether that's preceding another one of these daft heat waves, uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it's bad news when you've got to start watering stuff in the garden at the beginning of April. You know, that's a that's a sort of end of May June thing you start doing that, but. Uh, I made good use of the Vander bucket water, which I normally end up dumping because it's getting up a bit old. But I put it in the watering can and watered my bonsai with it. That's the, that's the first feed they've had this year. But, uh, should have had it earlier, really. They're all trying to grow leaves at the end of the day and they're using up all their reserves to do it because they haven't had any help. Anyway, I've ordered some more garden type liquid fertilizer so they'll start getting fed regularly again now. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.